Well, blessed Thursday to you as we come to you with your daily encouragement. And uh, we are at the bottom of page 48 in the second part of uh, Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And he has been going through the Psalms and seeing how the Psalms seem to sometimes have some difficulty for us to pray, especially when it comes to possibly cursing people, as some of the Psalms do. And the new word is impeccatory. Uh, also, some of the Psalms deal with innocence, when sometimes we know as Christians that we are not innocent. But we pray those through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who was the one who lived a perfect life when we have not lived a perfect life. So we pray these through Jesus Christ. And so now he makes the third point at the bottom of page 48, continuing with page 49. Third, the Psalms teach us to pray as a fellowship. The body of Christ is praying. And as an individual, one acknowledges that his prayers is only a minute fragment of the whole prayer of the church. He learns to pray the prayer of the body of Christ, and that lifts him up above his personal concerns and allows him to pray selflessly. Many of the Psalms were probably prayed antiphonally in an Old Testament community, either like what we have, uh, you read the light type, we read the light type. That's what the technical term of antiphonally means. And so there's a so-called parallelism of members. That remarkable repetition of the same sense in different words in the second line of the verse is not merely a literary form. It also has an import for the church and theology. In other words, the Psalms were meant to be read, as he's been talking about, in community. The Psalms were meant to be read in a life together. And I've often said this sometimes, because some people have the idea that Christianity should be about me and Jesus. Well, Jesus died for us individually, yes, but it is not something we do alone. And in fact, the great mark of that we don't do this alone is that we even have a Bible that is with us. Once we have a Bible, we are in community. Now, we have some uh, dialogue about why the Bible. Well, the Bible was the collection of certain uh, texts that were assigned for the benefit of community. Even before Christianity was started, Judaism had come together and said that this group of texts were the ones that will build community. And so already in the Old Testament, you have that dialogue of community. Now the difference in the New Testament is that they become centered, yes, upon one person, but that person is not me, a sinner. It is not even a human leader that has been established by human means. Not even a Peter or a Paul or some other important person. Not even a Martin Luther or even a Dietrich Bonhoeffer. That leader came from heaven. And that leader is Jesus Christ, who establishes a community. And so what Peter Bonhoeffer is arguing is that in each line of the Psalms, or in most Psalms, you have what is called a parallelism. And what that means is that you have one line saying an idea, and then it's repetitive in a mirror form by another line. And so uh, Bonhoeffer's argument is already in the Psalms, this is not just mere repetition this is not just something to be fancy. This is calling the community together. And it is showing right in the way that the Psalms are written, community can be and should be called together. And it already is calling us in life together. Now today, and even today as you're watching this video, I'm in one location, you're in another location. 
In fact, now that I posted this video, this video is now separated from time just as a psalm is separated from time. It is in the equivalent of a digital age written. And I'm not making any illusions that this someday will be part of a psalm book, but in a way it is a psalm book. Because together we are making life. Not because what I have to say out of my own interest is particularly important, but the more that I reflect what Jesus desires of not only my heart, but of your heart, together we make life together. And maybe sometimes there is some resonance in what I say, we don't have a responsive reading, as basically he is talking about here, but it is the same idea that we do not go through these dangers alone. We do not go through these times of maybe legitimate or some might say unlegitimate pronouncements of judgment or cursing alone. We do not go through these times of being guilty and also being innocent alone. We have the one who has perfect judgment. We have the one who has perfect innocence. And his name is Jesus. And through him, we can experience our life together. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement for you and that Jesus Christ will be the one who binds us together with cords that cannot be broken. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.